What is going on guys? Happy Friday evening. My name is Rodney and welcome to Crypto Bros. In tonight's video, we're going to be taking a look at this little guy. This is the Trezor hardware wallet, Bitcoin wallet, whatever you want to call it. So what I'm going to be doing is kind of taking you through, you know, my first impression of this wallet and then uh, I'm going to kind of show you how to get it up and running. It's very, very easy, but we're going to cover all of that tonight. And the first thing I'm actually going to start out is with the packaging. So it came in this little box. Man, I should probably have the screen bigger. But it came in this little box. And what I actually really liked about this is the box was completely sealed. So I, if you can look down, you can see this bright little uh, seal here. There's one on this end. And there is one on this end. And basically, right on here, it tells you if this patch package looks damaged or the seals are broken or it's open, send it back to them. You know, they don't want any funkiness going on with their products. You never know. Like, you get a hardware wallet, someone could put a, you know, someone might already have the seed, somebody could put a virus in there, whatever. That may be extreme, but I thought that was very cool that the, um, that it was sealed up like that so people couldn't get into it and you're the first opener. So the other thing that it came with is just this little tiny cord, and I'm sure you can see that, um, just this little cord. This is just a micro USB, so if you like a, have a Samsung phone or an Android user, chances are that you, um, you'll be able to use that to connect your Trezor to your USB drive on whatever computer you're using. And then I also had to pick up this this is just, uh, I have a newer MacBook and it's got the different end to it. And so um, this just lets me plug a USB drive in there. So I'm going to hook this up here right now. So bear with me, plugging that in. Um, and then I'll just put insert this cord. I understand that this is very simple stuff here, but um, just want to cover all the basics. Going to insert the cord into my Trezor and then this into the USB. And what will happen is, this little guy will turn on, this pin code will pop up. We'll get to this in a minute. This doesn't always happen, but I will leave this up for now. So when you first get your package um, and open it up, you're going to open everything up and you're going to connect it directly to your computer. From there, this little screen that you can see that's lit up, um, what this will tell you is it'll say go to trezor.io backslash start. And that will take you to this page. And it's basically it's just like, here's the three easy steps to set up your um, set up your Trezor wallet. What I want you to actually do while you're on this page before you go through these videos is I want you to go over to Docs. It's right here. Um, I'm just going to open it in a new tab so we can see it. But go to Docs and we're going to go to Trezor User Manual. And from there, we're just going to get the Trezor Chrome extension. I recommend using this wallet and, and this whole setup using Google Chrome as your internet browser. So all you're going to do is open this up. It's going to bring you right here to where it says number two, Chrome um, extension. You're just going to click this where it says Trezor Chrome extension. From here, it'll bring you to the extension store or whatever, and it'll say like download or install um, Trezor Chrome extension. All you're going to do is click that, and it will bring up this, or it will download the extension to Chrome, and you're going to want that on this part of your computer. So that extension kind of connects to the Trezor, which will connect to the wallet page that we'll get to in just a second. So. That is where we're at at this point. We're just going to launch the app. I've already done this, um, so it's not going to go to the part that we need it to. Um, so you can actually already see it's already set up. Uh, I'm going to just close this down, and we're going to go back to this um, start page. Now, when you get here, there's two short videos that just talk about what each of these things are. So you can kind of see in this picture these little dots right here. Let's see if I can zoom in. I cannot I thought I could okay so these little dots right here are representing these numbers that will pop up on your actual treasure screen and this is just a safety precaution so it's gonna ask you to pick a pin um, and right here it just says try to avoid a simple pin like one two three four um, but the numbers right here are all scrambled and then they are relative to these block blocks so this top left bo block Jesus sorry guys this top left block would technically be number two and then this middle one would be number eight, and then the one all the way here on the right on the top row is the number three. So that's how you pick your pin. Then this short little guy just talks about your recovery seed. So also in the package you get two booklets that look like this. 
and there are it's numbered 1 through 24 with a line in there. So once you go through the process of picking your pin, whatever it may be, you're going to have to enter it in twice. The next thing you're going to do is it's going to ask you um, to pull this out. Well, it's going to tell you like, hey, we're going to do the stuff to get your seed, your, uh, your seed code. And from then, you're going to actually grab your treasure. And I, I'm not going to be able to show you that part, so just bear with me here. But you're going to grab your treasure, and on the screen, it's going to tell you a word. It'll say number one, you know, it'll say like turtle or something. You're going to write turtle in the number one slot here, and then you're going to click the button on the right of the treasure, and that'll take you to next. There's literally such a tiny amount of information on the screen. It's very, very easy. So first thing. We set up the, the pin code. Second thing, it's gonna say, hey, you're gonna do this seed part and you need to write it down. So then you have to turn and look at your actual Trezor wallet to do that. After you go through all 24 of them and write them down, it's gonna have you do a manual confirmation of all of these. So you scroll through them again. You know, First one will be turtle, number two will be pig, number three will be crypto bros, number four, whatever. So you go through and you verify it. Once you get to that point, um, it will bring you, oh no, oh no, I wanted it to have my, I've already entered in my pin, I wanted to do that on here. So what it'll do is it'll bring you to this page and um, when you open up this page, and it might actually do it now, but when you open up this page, it will bring up that weird block thing where you have to enter in your pin and then from there you'll have to look down at your Trezor again and you'll, um, it will show you that number pattern that you have to use to enter your pin on there. So all you do is transfer it. So, and then the page that we're actually right now is once you're connected is just the basic um, is just the basic wallet layout here. So it's very simple. So um, here's our home screen right here on the left hand side. It says this is Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, blah blah blah. He, uh, I, I should probably read all these off. It also holds Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. You can get other ERC token or ERC20 token coins to be stored, but you have to set that up through my Ether wallet. I'm not covering that in tonight's video. We're just going over the basics. So anyway, um, from here, you just we're kind of at the home screen. These are pictures that you can actually set up to show on your Trezor wallet. And um, let's just say we want to do some action here. We want to... Um, Oh, you know what? We're actually going to be able to, to check this out because it's showing that I'm disconnected. So here, we're going to reconnect. If I pop that out, it should log me off. Um, well, I'm just going to refresh this. Pin enabled. All right, let's plug this back in. There we go. So this is what you would see initially when you come back in here. I'm going to pause this video for just one second so I can enter in this pin. I don't think it would really matter because you guys can't see what I'm seeing, but I'm being very weird about security. I'm a big believer in security. I have a VPN and do all this other weird stuff just because I want to keep my stuff safe. So hold on just one second. Okay, so now that I've entered in my pin, we are on the home screen, and this is actually what I wanted to show you guys the first time, um, but we are connected now. Up here are our coins. Um, we're on the basic tab. If we shoot over to home screen, again, that is like where you can kind of, you can pick these out to show your pictures. Here's the advanced stuff. Um, here's our, our tabs up top. Oops, I didn't mean to go to that. Um, but we're gonna go into the wallet, and uh, this is where we can actually start doing some of our movements that we want to do. So make sure you're just up here in the wallet, not the docs page. And now we can actually send, receive, do whatever type of um, transactions we want to do with our Trezor. So here would be, you know, I, I haven't done anything yet. I've opened this up, I've went through today, I've set it up. I, I haven't actually moved anything over that. And I wanted to show a transaction on here from my Exodus wallet to the Trezor, but the Bitcoin transaction fee was 18 bucks. So I'm just gonna try to find a better time to do that. So anyway, very, very simple stuff. If I wanted to send it, we just go to send, we copy and paste in the address um, that we wanna send it to. Same thing with receive, um, no big deal here. You know, if you want a fresh address, you can get that. They have a lot of secure features in on this. So, um, so yeah, guys, that is it. Uh, 
Now you may be asking yourself, well, why did I pick Trezor over um, the Nano S? I don't want to say no reason in particular. It didn't necessarily make sense for me to get um, the Nano S. I know a lot of people gra or gravitate towards that. Um, one, it's a little bit cheaper, but two, um, the Nano holds Ripple, and I know a lot of people out there are big fans of Ripple. Check out that hat. Um, are big fans of Ripple, so that would make sense. Ripple doesn't make up the largest part of my portfolio, so I didn't necessarily gravitate towards that one, although I think at some point as my collection of Ripple grows, I will gravitate, gravitate towards it. What I've liked so far, though, is this has just been super, super easy to use. Um, I've tried to shoot this a couple times and I've botched it, but I, I had up at one point their warranty. You know, they don't cover necessarily wear and tear or, uh, or you know, damage or anything that you may do to it. So definitely take care of this thing. Um, what I would recommend is after you get like your, uh, your key or your key thing filled out here, put it in a super safe place. If you guys have a, a safe that's, you know, uh, fireproof or anything like that, definitely go that route. If you want to put it in like a plastic container in case your house floods or the, the roof is ripped off and rain pours in or something really extreme like that. That's not necessarily a bad bad idea, but keeping yourself safe and secure is the biggest thing here. So um, all that being said, guys, uh, that's all I have for you tonight. So far, I am a big fan of this. I'm excited to get my Bitcoin on there. One of the big reasons that I even kind of gravitated towards um, a hardware wallet over like uh, an Exodus wallet or keeping it in Coinbase, which I don't like to do, or even on the, the general exchanges, is for the fact that you can take advantage of all the forks. So when we're talking about Bitcoin in general, remember Bitcoin is not just the current price like 17K, but Bitcoin's current price is not just $17,000. Remember, you get all the forks. So if you have you know one Bitcoin in there and a new fork comes out and I, I believe Bitcoin private is on the way, if you have your Bitcoin in your wallets, you are eligible for these forks. Exodus doesn't support them. Coinbase doesn't always support them. But even if we're looking at this, so if I had Bitcoin in here when the Bitcoin gold fork came and the Bitcoin cash fork came, I would totally also have that. So whatever that's worth, I would have now. I don't necessarily want to call it free money, but um, you would get that for holding this in your wallet. And no, it's not on. The only way this thing turns on is just if it's connected to your computer. It's just very smart like that. So um, another one of the benefits of a having your you know large sums of cryptocurrency off the web and in a safe, secure spot so no one can get it. But anyways, guys, that is all I have for you tonight. Um, if you are looking to get a hardware wallet, so far I'm a big fan of Trezor. That link um, is my wife. She knows I'm shooting a video. I'm shooting a video. Um, that link is below. You can get that at Amazon. You can also go to Trezor.io and, and buy it from them as well. Uh, I think they might be back ordered a little bit. I was actually on Amazon trying to track it down for a few days before I get this. So you can get it there. And last but not least, if you are finding these videos helpful, by all means, guys, subscribe. I care. I take time and respond to every single comment. I like the value um, that you guys add to the channel. So many good comments. Um, I don't even want to say so many good questions because a lot of times you guys are sharing great insights. So anyway, very thankful for all of you. Um, we're on our way to 2,000 subscribers, but uh, that's all I have for you tonight. Um, yeah, guys, happy Friday. Enjoy the weekend, and I will be back tomorrow with another cryptocurrency video. See ya.